This happened about two years ago, but whenever I'm home alone now, the memory always comes creeping back. My family had gone camping over the weekend, but I stayed back because of work commitments. Honestly, I was sort of relieved because I'm not much of an outdoor person, and I cherished the thought of having the house to myself. The first night alone was pretty uneventful, just me, some takeout and binge-watching old sitcoms. But the second night, that's when things got weird. It was late, maybe around midnight, and I was up in my room when I heard what sounded like clattering noises coming from the garage. Our garage is detached from the house and sits at the back of our property. So it was odd to hear anything coming from that direction, especially that late. At first I thought maybe a raccoon or some animal had gotten in there somehow. We'd had a raccoon problem in the past, so it wouldn't have been too surprising. I grabbed a flashlight and my phone, just in case I needed to call animal control, and headed downstairs to check it out. I walked through the kitchen and into the mudroom that leads out to the backyard. I flicked on the backyard lights and paused at the door trying to listen. The clattering had stopped and for a moment I wondered if I'd just imagined it. I almost turned around to go back to bed, but then I saw it. The side door to the garage was slightly ajar. Now, I knew I hadn't left it open. Panic started to set in. I thought about going back inside and just calling the police, but then I thought it might just be some small animal after all. And I'd feel silly calling the cops over a raccoon. So with my phone ready to dial 911 if needed, I slowly walked towards the garage. I pushed the door open a bit more and shone the flashlight inside. That's when I saw him, a man, crouching by my dad's toolbox. He froze when the light hit him, and we just stared at each other for what felt like a full minute. He was scruffy, wearing a dark hoodie and gloves, which was a dead giveaway that he wasn't just some random guy who'd wandered in by mistake. I backed away, not taking my eyes off him, and that's when I finally had the sense to call the police. I spoke quietly, trying not to provoke him, telling the dispatcher what was happening. The man must have heard me because he suddenly stood up and started moving towards the door where I was standing. I've never run so fast in my life. I sprinted back to the house, locked the door behind me, and turned on every light I could on the way to my room upstairs where I locked myself in and waited for the police, my heart beating out of my chest. The police arrived in minutes, which felt like hours, and found the man still in the garage. He had tried to hide behind our old car, but obviously it hadn't worked. It turned out he had been involved in a string of thefts in our area, mostly stealing tools and small machinery from garages. They arrested him, and after giving my statement, I spent the rest of the night wide awake, every little sound making me jump. The next day, I had a security system installed, something we should have done a long time ago. Now I double check all the locks, keep the lights on, and listen for any strange sounds. It's crazy how one night can change everything. This happened just a few months back. My parents had taken a trip overseas, leaving me to hold down the fort at home. They were going to be gone for a whole week, and while I loved the freedom, I also knew I'd get a bit lonely by myself. The first few days went by without a hitch. I went to work, came home, and enjoyed having the entire house to myself. I caught up on some reading, played video games until way too late, and generally just enjoyed the peace and quiet. It was around the fourth night that things started to get weird. I had just finished dinner and was cleaning up when the phone rang. I wasn't expecting any calls, and most of my friends usually text, so I was curious who it could be. I answered the phone, but there was just silence on the other end. I said hello a couple more times before hanging up, figuring it was just a wrong number or a bad connection. I went back to cleaning, but then the phone rang again. This time, when I answered, it wasn't just silence. 
I could hear someone breathing on the other end, slow and heavy. A chill ran up my spine, but I tried to keep my voice steady, asking who was there. After a few seconds of more breathing, they hung up. Now, I was officially freaked out. I thought about calling the police, but what would I tell them? That someone called and breathed into the phone? It seemed like it wasn't enough to bother them with yet. I locked all the doors and windows, double-checked them, and tried to settle down by watching some TV, but I couldn't really focus. Every little noise made me jump, and I kept glancing at the phone, dreading it would ring again. And it did. This time, when I picked up, there was a whisper. It was so soft I could barely make it out, but I heard my name. They said my name, and then, you look so calm. That was it. I slammed the phone down and called the police immediately. I was alone, someone was watching me, and they were trying to scare me. I knew that much. The police were at my house within 10 minutes. They asked a bunch of questions, looked around the house, and even did a sweep of the backyard. They didn't find anything, but one officer stayed to patrol the area while his partner gave me advice on what to do if the caller contacted me again. They suggested it might be a prank, but they took it seriously given I was home alone. I didn't sleep much that night, or the next for that matter. The call stopped after I spoke with the police, but the damage was done. Every time the phone rang, my heart skipped a beat. When my parents came back, I told them what happened. They were concerned, of course, and we decided to install a more advanced security system complete with cameras. The thought that someone knew I was alone and tried to intimidate me by whispering something so personal through the phone was deeply unsettling. I still don't know who it was or what they wanted. Nothing like that has happened since and the calls stopped completely, but I'm definitely more cautious now. I keep my phone close, always lock up tight. And I've learned how important it is to have good security and to know your neighbors just in case. It was a typical Friday night. My parents were out for their usual date night thing, and my brother was at his friend's house for a sleepover. So yeah, it was just me, home alone, pretty typical for a high school junior. I was actually looking forward to a chill night, just gaming and maybe binge-watching something. Around 9 p.m., I grabbed some snacks and settled in the living room. I had just started a new show when I heard this weird tapping noise. It sounded like it was coming from the front door. At first, I figured it might just be the wind or something. My neighborhood is pretty safe, so I wasn't too freaked out, just annoyed that I had to pause my episode. I went to the door, flipped on the porch light, and peeked through the peephole. Nothing. Just the quiet, empty porch. Shrugging it off, I headed back to my couch fortress. But the moment I sat down, the tapping started again. This time, it was louder, more deliberate. Okay, so now I was a bit nervous. I muted the TV, trying to listen. The tapping stopped. Everything was silent except for my own breathing. I texted my best friend, joking about how I might be in the beginning of a horror movie. She told me to lock everything and stay inside. Typical horror movie survival tips, you know. After double-checking the locks on the doors and windows, I tried to get back into my show. But I couldn't shake off the uneasy feeling. It was around 10.30 p.m. when I heard a noise again. Not tapping this time, but a kind of scraping sound coming from the back of the house. Now I was genuinely scared. I grabbed a baseball bat we kept in the coat closet and tiptoed toward the back door. The scraping sound continued, growing louder as I approached. Through the curtain-covered glass door, I saw shadows moving. My heart was literally racing at this point. I couldn't tell myself it was just the wind or some animal outside. Someone was definitely out there. 
I didn't dare turn on the back porch light. Instead, I crept to the kitchen, grabbed the phone, and dialed 911. I whispered into the phone, explaining the situation. The dispatcher told me to stay on the line, be quiet, and wait for the police to arrive. Hiding behind the sofa, I peeked toward the back door. The scraping had stopped, and it was silent again. Way too silent. Then, all of a sudden, the power went out. Complete darkness. My phone screen seemed blindingly bright as I waited, clutching the bat with my other hand. It felt like forever in the dark, hearing only my heartbeat, and the distant sirens getting closer. Finally, I saw the flashlights outside, heard voices, and the comforting sound of someone loudly announcing, Police! They found a guy in our backyard, trying to pry open the back door. Turned out he was wanted for a string of burglaries in our area. The cops figured he cut the power to try and disable any alarm systems. After giving my statement and watching the guy get taken away, I was a mess. The relief mixed with the adrenaline crash just had me shaking. My parents rushed home and there were a lot of hugs and reassurances. It took a long time to feel comfortable being alone in the house again. Even now, every little noise makes me jumpy. But I learned a lot about trusting my instincts. If something feels off, it probably is. And yeah, always make sure your phone is charged. You never know when you'll need to make that emergency call. This happened last summer, and honestly, it still freaks me out when I think about it. My parents were away for the weekend at some spa retreat, leaving me in charge of the house. I was actually looking forward to some solo time because it meant I could play my music as loud as I wanted and not have to wear headphones. The day started off perfectly normal. I did some chores, played some video games, and ordered pizza for dinner. As the evening set in, I decided to set up a little movie marathon for myself. I had just started the first movie when I heard a car pull into our driveway. I didn't think much of it at first because I assumed it was just a neighbor turning around or maybe a wrong address. It happens sometimes since our house number is similar to one on the next street. But then, the car didn't leave. Curious? I paused my movie and peeked out through the living room curtains. There was a beat up sedan just sitting there. I couldn't see inside because the windows were pretty tinted. Now, this was unusual, and a little alarm bell went off in my head. Why would someone just park and sit there? After about ten minutes, the car was still there. I was getting more and more anxious. I texted a couple of friends to ask what they thought I should do, and they all said if the car didn't leave soon, I should call the cops. I decided to wait a little longer hoping they'd just realize their mistake and drive off. Another 20 minutes passed. It was getting dark now, and the car was still there. That's when I decided enough was enough. I grabbed my phone to call the non-emergency police number just as I saw the car doors open. Two people got out, a man and a woman, and they started walking up to our front door. Now, I was really scared. I didn't know these people and there was no reason for them to be at our house this late. I quickly locked the front door and went to the back door to make sure it was locked too. I was just in time to see the man trying the handle of the door. When he realized it was locked, he started knocking. Not polite little knocks, but loud, insistent banging. The woman was looking around like she was checking out the backyard or something. I was officially freaked out, I dialed 911 this time, explained the situation in a hushed voice while crouching below the windowsill, peeking out just enough to keep an eye on what they were doing. The dispatcher told me to stay on the line and that officers were on the way. While I waited, the man started yelling through the door, asking me to open up, saying things like they just wanted to talk, and they knew I was home because the TV was on. I didn't respond. I stayed as quiet as I could, heart pounding. 
The police arrived pretty quickly, but it felt like hours to me. When the cops pulled in, the man and the woman tried to hurry back to their car. But the police caught up with them and started talking to them right in the driveway. I stayed inside, still on the line with the dispatcher, until they came to the door to talk to me. Turns out, these people had been trying to find their estranged family member who used to live in our house before us. They got desperate and thought trying to force a conversation might help them find some information. The cops warned them about private property laws and trespassing, and after some more questioning, they finally left. The rest of the night, I was too shaken up to go back to my movie marathon. I ended up double-checking all the locks, turning on every outdoor light, and staying up until I saw the sun come up. I told my parents about it when they got back, and we installed a new security system the following week. This one really shook me up, and I'm a pretty chill person usually. About a year ago, my folks went on a weekend trip to visit my aunt and uncle, leaving me home alone, which was fine by me. I was planning a relaxing weekend, catching up on some studying and maybe watching a few movies. The first day passed without incident. I had a couple of friends over. We watched movies, ordered pizza, the usual. They left around 11 p.m. and I decided to turn in early. I was just drifting off when I heard something that made me sit straight up in bed. A scraping sound, like metal on metal, coming from the backyard. Our house backs up to a wooded area, and while it's generally pretty safe, we've had the occasional animal wander through. But this sound wasn't like an animal. It was deliberate and rhythmic. I was nervous, but I told myself it was probably just the wind moving something around outside. Unable to shake the uneasy feeling, I got up and went to my bedroom window to check. Looking out into the backyard, I couldn't see much. Our outdoor light was out, I'd forgotten to replace it. And it was a particularly dark, moonless night. Straining my eyes, I thought I saw something move near the shed at the far end of the yard. I squinted, trying to make out what it was, but it was too dark. Deciding I needed a better look, I went downstairs to the kitchen, grabbed the flashlight, and hesitated at the back door. Did I really want to go out there? After a moment's debate, I switched on the porch light instead and stepped out onto the deck, flashlight in hand. I shone the light towards the shed, and that's when I saw it. A shadowy figure crouched low near the shed. As the light hit it, the figure looked up and we locked eyes. A chill ran down my spine. It wasn't an animal. It was a person wearing dark clothes and a hood, clearly trying to stay hidden. I darted back inside and locked the door, heart pounding. I wasn't sure if they had seen me or not, but I didn't want to take any chances. I called 911 immediately. The dispatcher told me to stay inside and keep the doors locked. I watched from the window flashlight off now as the figure stood up and started moving slowly towards the house. I lost sight of them once they got close to the house due to the angle of the windows. Terrified, I moved away from the window, trying to stay out of sight, and waited for the police to arrive. Every little noise had me jumping, and it seemed like forever before I heard sirens in the distance. When the police arrived, they found the person trying to hide in the bushes along the side of our house. It turned out to be a teenager from a few blocks over, known to the police for minor thefts and trespassing. They had been trying to steal tools from our shed. The officers were really great, staying with me until I calmed down and felt safe again. They checked the house and property thoroughly before leaving, after they left, I spent a sleepless night, jumping at every little sound. The next morning, I installed motion-activated lights around the property and made sure every lock was secure. Thank you for watching. If you found these stories gripping, don't forget to subscribe for more spine-tingling content. For another hair-raising tale, check out our suggested video. 
And if you're hungry for more eerie encounters, dive into our playlist featuring similar chilling narratives.